We're going to go with this trio. So they're, they're, Feet trying to make a run here. They're a package combo, basically. The top side for Mega, Rocky, Lloyd, and G4 have just played so many games together across a few different teams. Uh, now sticking together with Mega, which is strange because then you could think, like, why not put Colvin Feet as the AD carry? <laughs> And then you would actually have like a four tie roster. Like, imagine a tie roster of Rocky Lloyd G4, Cold and Feet What the Jess. Cold and Feet of What the Jess used to be a duo. That is a superstar tie roster. Woo! Yeah, get me that. I want to see that. <laughs> this is Fish. Fish coming in next year for uh, LST. Coming in. If you're listening to me, all right. Rocky Lloyd G4, he former will coach. coach, former <laughs> coup. <laughs> Get Cold and Feet in there. Get What the Jess in there. I'll coach you, okay? I only charge two million a year. That's it. Oh, jeez. Some bank right what, there. What? You want to win worlds? Well, you got to pay me. Oh, yikes. Into our first ban and pick phase for game one. Lots of support bans coming out here, actually, on the side of Mega. Both the Yumi and the Pike being banned out. And also the Kench. Going down the list here yeah. pretty fast. Targeting Rich right off the bat. Don't give him Pike. Don't give him Yumi. Tom Kench also takes away the Sona Kench lane from Mega. So denying a lot right off the bat. Because there's no real support you can pair with Sona anymore like once Tom Kench and Pike are taken off the table. See the old. Don't say Tarek, they'll smack you. <laughs> He's in the bin. He should stay in the bin. You say that. But AoE could. invulnerability. Get out of my video game. I like that, though. Get rid of the Aatrox. Yeah, look. Sensible red side team. Banning sensible blue side overpowered pick. <laughs> I wonder which team didn't do that today, Armored Project. Oh, sh just mess it up. Shouldn't have said the names. All right. What's Mega want to try and pick up here? Going to lay down the Akali right away here for their first pick. And Akali is being picked globally once again as a priority mid lane pick. Saw it a lot in the LEC. We saw it in the OPL Grand Finals today. Claire picked it up in a few very crucial games for the Chiefs. Wasn't able to convert a victory, but was definitely a thorn um, in Mammoth's side today. People use it very effectively as, as what it should be. An assassin pick, running around, picking up kills across the map, roaming quite heavily with it now. Here though, Silas and Zaya being shown by Detonator. So already K Star showing his pick into the matchup. A lot of wave clear, a lot of safety. Ho oh, ho, pocket pick. You see the Varus come out here and it will be locked in. That's a Dayul pocket pick. Has only been played once so far in the LST. And you know, Detonator, they got rid of that one pick that would do absolutely well into it, and that was the Kenshin draft. Going to pair that up with the Jarvan, so a lot of easy level six follow up being shown already for Mega. Nice draft for Mega. That's an issue. Round this out with Rakan. It's an O Brain pick here. Can't do that. Why is it so cold in our studio again? Who the heck changed the temperature? Uh, Last game it was a beautiful temperature in the studio. Now it's just freezing. I don't know. You you brought in, like, what are you drinking? Are you drinking water or tea? Water. Uh, I thought maybe you made the tea, like, the tea made you warm. So cold. Oh my. Yeah, and if the team made me warm, I wouldn't be complaining. Are you okay? No, because then the air around you would feel colder. That's not how being warm works, Opal. Good brain, get away. You, you. Oh my lord, how many support bands are there? Yeah. Jeez. Get rid of all of Pop's champions. Look at that. I feel like we're going to see a Thresh. We could also see a Nautilus. Alistar is still available. True. Nautilus is still available. Like this, I don't understand. You ban Braum and Leona, what's going on? Auto jungle. All right. We're going to see ourselves a Sejuani possibly here for Danator. As the majority of the jungle pool has been banned see, out as well. Mega's double jungle ban makes sense. These are two disrupting uh, junglers. Gragas for the knockback, Lee Sin for the knockback. When you have an immobile carry and an assassin, you don't want these disrupting champions in the game, especially when you're going with a Jarvan for the lockdown. Good bans. Ah. Uh, the Braum and Leona, to me, just doesn't make too much sense because... I mean, Braum is a good pick from Pop, but Leona's like, okay. Zyra Khan does well into Leona. You'd be fine. And Pop still has his pocket thrash. Alistar was still available to be picked as well. A bit of a waste band coming out from Detsune, but they got the priority pick of Sejuani. Now we see Hero Necton being shown. Likely see that for Rocky. 
Sejuani also just does so well into Jarvan right now. Jarvan doesn't have the burst to kill Sejuani and his, his burst is up front. So even if he gets the jump on Sejuani, his damage is reduced significantly Ooh. thanks to Sejuani passive. Golden Feet. Coming out here, likely with that Kled in response to Rocky's Renekton. Kled just has a, such a beautiful splash out. Like there's a battle going on. He looks so menacing, and squashing an arrow. Skull's looking at a bloody butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> and almost looking his eye, too. You know, it's peace, yet war happening at the same time. With that too, you're also uh, is Ren is Rakan coded as a melee or is he range still? He's melee. He's melee, so you're now gonna have three melee follow-ups for that Sejuani too. Mm -hmm. That's gonna easily proc that passive. So a lot of easy follow-up during a gank as well. Should be a ton of CC to hopefully lock down some of these picks because we want to see that early aggression That's come out. Good draft. I just complained about support bands, but very good draft from Mega and Destiny. This should be a good match. another infernal a lot of fire tonight i really like varus varus um drops in and out of metas there's just been so many changes to him my favorite meta with varus was season three right after his first release where you would build bloodthirst and last whisper straight up those were your first two items you just went for raw ad um because Last Whisper used to give you 40 AD, Bloodthirster used to stack up to 100 attack damage. So you just start with 140 damage with high armor penetration. You yeah. max Q and you just, boop, people die. Yeah, because the, the max Q scaling on it was a much higher too, if yeah. I recall. Uh, but they had to nerf it because Riot found it so difficult to balance around that, which I felt was the cop-out way to deal with it. But that they found it so difficult to balance around it, so they nerfed it quite heavily, now making it so that your Q has to be the priority. So you can go on hit Varus. Poke Varus is my favorite thing to play in solo queue. You start corrupting pot, you take Comet, um, and then you just go bot lane, you just spam spells at people. Because if you hit a Q, they all die. Oh, Ooh. this is a really cheeky start. Here we and go. They all just run up. Pop, gonna use his Flay, taking a lot of damage here, is able to avoid, and that should be the Flash actually saved on the Varus, and K-Star is forced to fuse his heal. Yeah, really nicely play coming up from Pop, understanding that if he burns his summoner spells here, they'll get a good trade for level one, allowing Dayul to take control of this lane. So, well played by Mega, a little bit of a disconnect. Zaya Rakan's level one isn't as powerful as it used oh! to be. A little bit late to the party. Gonna try and get that slow, but G4's already roaming over. Does get the stun. Lloyd taking a decent chunk of damage. Has flash available and the Conqueror, so he's gonna be able to back off. And a little bit of a late rotation coming out from Arch, and he has he was pushed in. Yeah, nicely done though. Lloyd's able to successfully steal that blue buff, and he will continue over towards his side of the map. So three buffs start coming out for Lloyd. Be fairly happy with that. It's fairly low on Jarvan, so he'll probably have to back after he clears out his Raptors. Some nicely done there. Some early vision onto the Raptor pit, giving them information. He was able to rush that down in time with the assistance of his mid lane coming over as well. Free buff start. Feeling pretty good. Archney using a lot of mana here in this lane. Does have Corrupting Pot, so he should be able to get some back, but. We'll take a decent chunk of damage up in this top lane. Home feet. Gonna try and re-trade. You are in the middle of a wave here, bud. Rocky gets back a decent chunk of damage here. Home feet gotta be careful. Yeah, he's gotta be careful. Rocky, okay, he can't dive him anymore, but he might try. He's oh, going underneath. It. Does he actually get it? Rocky able to get away oh. with first blood. Really well played from Rocky Woo. to save the slice and dice and flash first, understanding that he needed the actual distance, and makes the correct move. A panic play there would have been a run back towards his turret where he would have died, but he makes the correct move, moves in towards the opposition's mid lane to get the double slice out of there, getting rid of that final turret shot. 
beautifully played dive, and that's what we see so much in this round to Glenn matchup. Well, there you go. Flash engage coming out from Rich, but there's really no follow up here. That's going to be a play also used. Teleport's going to come through, and hello, it's Rocky. He's fresh off base with a nice item buy, slice and dice, as well as the rest comes through, and Denator lose all three members in bot lane. Yeah. In the words of the wise Toby One, it's a disaster. Because that was, that was a poor gank attempt that was kicked off by Rich of all people, flashing in for the knockup onto Pop. It's I extremely get, forced. I get the idea. Pop has no flash. Cool. But Sex nowhere close. K Star can't even step up. Really poor force. Good reaction from Rocky, though. Just no hesitation, teleports down bot, secures all three kills for his team. Even without that teleport, that would have been Sek dying. That would have at least been Sejuani falling just to Dale as well as Pop. So not the start Denator are looking for here. So now oh, no. down 2,500 gold yeah. at five minutes. No, that's not the start they were looking for. Definitely not. They've been put in the bin in all their lanes. Because Akali is up 45 CS to 28 in the mid lane. Yep. Yeah, Mega just opened up the bin and said, here you go, jump in. Oh, again, Rich trying to, but immediately he gets slayed back, so it's really hard to get a good trade off. It's the only good thing about the Zaya Rakan lane is if he jumps in, you know, even if he gets slayed back, he can still jump back towards Zaya, not take too much damage for it. Dale's going for the on-hit Varus build too, so he's going to have plenty of sustain to stay in this bottom lane. Uh, and his fighting capabilities are going to be so strong. You see him mounting a nice CS lead. Uh, they can't even contest. They can't even step up to these ways at the moment. Rich trying I, to lay I, a trap, but... I just would have liked to see Dayul control that creep wave a little bit better. He had a three-stack minion wave, and he could have just held it just off his turret and kept a freeze, because K-Star's not farming. I think this is the situation where if you're Dayul, you go, K-Star's not farming, let's punish him for three or four more waves by forcing him to step up, force the jungler to come down here. Uh, instead, he's built a large stack of minions oh, for himself. Geez. So this large stack is going to eventually crash in towards their turret. So Dayu might be banking on either uh, the turret, denying a lot of this CS, or a dive coming in from both G4 as well as Lloyd. But it'd have to be synergized with both the jungler as well as the mid laner on this big wave that's pushing in. Uh, or just creating space for the dragon as well. It's nice. So different play styles. Dayu has gone for creating space instead of denying heavily. Yeah, and already up 23 CS, so feeling pretty good here. And also, hell, it might He's not dead. matter if you just get kills as Popper able to find the mark. Dayul able to survive through the Ignite, and that is going to be a massive amount of experience as well as gold being denied from K-Star. Yes, Varus has one of the most simple trade patterns in the bottom lane. Auto attack and then press an ability. It does plenty of damage, and it's spammable. Varus doesn't have that many mana problems because his E is on such a low cost. So as soon as he got two stacks of the K-Star, pop the Q, that's half his hit points. If Thresh hits a hook after that, he's dead. Flash or no flash, you hit a hook onto K-Star, he just instantly dies. Because the, the three more auto attacks will be followed by Varus during the crowd control, and E will follow up for the slow and for the damage, and it's just lights out he's carry. Very nicely played coming up from Mega's bot lane. He's got a Cutlass and a recurve bow already. Yeah, and with that too, they, they denied so much CS and experience that that's now a 3,500 gold lead. Oh no, Arshini G4 does have Flawless Execution available, but still needs to get a little bit more chip damage on him. Also pretty hard when your opponent has the same ultimate as you at the moment. You mm. can equally use it for dashing away. If a sake up and toward the top lane was looking for maybe a play, as Coldfee was able to actually bring that a little bit closer back, the matchup now only down 4 CS. Look at how little G4 cares right now. He just walks up to Trey with Arch and he doesn't mind getting hit by the Qs. Or he's already got the revolver. So I think that Akali has a nice lane matchup here against Silas, because Silas has had the sustain, but Akali doesn't need mana, so she can just every time Silas steps up just trades, and G4 started with minion dematerializer, which means that G4 can continually push, kill cannon minions fast, and Mega said that Archney, who's a melee character as well, needs to get in close into a cannon wave to try and fight this Akali. It's a good start from G4. The minion dematerializers are basically giving him a kill worth of gold in the lead in the mid lane. 
And now it's bot lane two. Pushing back toward Mega. This is not what Danator are looking for. Pop finds another hook into another quick ultimate from Dayul, and Pop gets the kill. Just so simple coming up from Pop and Dayul. They hit the hook, chain the crowd control together so Rakan can't go anywhere, and follow up with all the damage in the world. Very nicely played. This bottom lane is done. They can't even step up to fight anymore. Uh, and that means that Lloyd has all the access and priority towards the bottom side of the map, too. He can try and test with his blue buff. Sek does secure it very nicely. Uh, but you can't even step anywhere near the spot yeah. lane now. It's 85 Woo! to 46 CS lead. See you later, K-Star. That's also uh, K-Star having to pick up the call, too. So he's going to be pretty much non-existent at all in the lane. And it seems like Dayul says, all right, K-Star, you know, you might be close, but I'm going to widen that gap quite a bit. Oh yeah. Oh, this is a this is a beatdown coming out from Dayul. Again, solidifying why he's one of the best AD carries in the league. And this virus has drawn bans already. It's just one of his signature pocket picks that he does so well on. Like Varus isn't really in the current meta. Woo! Nice trading for Markini. G4 was looking for the Shuriken, not finding it, using it mainly for a little bit of spread there. Yeah, it's a very nice take of Aftershock coming out from Silas here too, because you want to try and get into the melee trades against an Akali. And the Aftershock just means that you can tank so much more when you're going for these trades. Again, farming that up. Take a look at across the map. All the lanes in favor of Mega. Mid lane, that's now a 20 CS advantage. That's also going to be a hex tech soon completed by G4. Teleport also going to be up on the Akali. Rocky's going to have the same, so we might be seeing a big play down toward bot lane. If they wanted to go for it. Blade of the Lone King is complete for Varus, so he's now well and truly online. He's also got Ninja Tabby too. Oh. He's just going to soak up what little damage K-Star is able to put out because he went call. Nunatabi is really good for the lane. It's also really good for when there is an AD threat that can die for backlines easy. Something like Zed, Kled. This is rather poor. Oh, Dale turns in. Oh! Rich, you gotta be careful because that enhanced execute on that piercing arrow. Oh, yeah. Almost able to take him out. Had Dale played that a little bit more risky, he could have tried and stacked up the, the W charges for both his E as well as his Q. It would have been much more difficult to hit. Uh, but could have probably killed Rich there, who forced an engage. I think also a lot of players forget that there is an execute mechanic on the Varus alt, uh, arrow if you use that W. So you can have a pretty large chunk of damage. I think at level one, it's something like 9% of your missing health. And then it gets charged. Bone Feet haven't used charge just to get back into lane. As his tower's taken a significant chunk of damage. Oh, yeah. Sec and Lloyd are both up here. Lloyd's waiting in the wings. Colin Feet not being too aggressive just yet. They don't. They also picked up Rift Herald, so they're looking for a dive here on Colin Feet, or at least try and get him back to base. Bye. Lloyd's like, oh, okay. Oh, but he's going to teleport in. Oh. I don't like this. I think you're wasting a teleport to try and secure a kill. I mean, there's no way Colton Feet fights you. You just went back to base and picked up a full black cleaver. <laughs> so this looks like going to be a force with Terror play. Take the top tower. Immediately here. So Rocky's going to step up. Also going to demolish Brock. And that's going to be first brick gold going in favor of Mega as they claim a 7,000 gold lead at 13 minutes. Yeah, they can usher in another Rift Herald charge here too. Colin Feet won't be able to kill it in time even if the eye opens up. So there we go. That's going to be a nice half chunk of damage onto the second tier tower. And now Rocky can either stay in that side lane pushing or can start joining the party into mid lane. This is a disgusting match. We have 7,000 gold ahead here, Opal. This is seed one versus seed two. Woo! It's not, that's not fair. Nice, right, good trades coming up from Colin V, but he almost gets dismounted. You can't fight Renekton anymore as Kled. Once you use your Vicious Strikes and you get dismounted, you can't fight him anymore. He'll just burst you down too quickly. So he's going to show. Arctic Assault does not connect. And 
Dayul should be able to claim this tower for himself as well. Oh, cool, Hook's cool. gonna connect. Chain of Corruption gonna come out. That's gonna force the stopwatch. Tower's gonna go down. And that's the second one of the game here for Mega, 8,000 gold. Now a stopwatch being burnt is as good as burning 600 gold. Is that, how much, that is how much a stopwatch costs unless you're buying it through your runes itself. So that's still a very good trade coming out from Mega. Very that's nice. 11 plates to zero as Detonator have yet to even crack open a single plate at this point. And they're on track for a perfect game here, Opal. Like a super perfect game. Not even getting turret plates. That's a little bit scary. Like you mentioned, this is our first and second seed from the same region. But there's such a big difference. I think, though, a lot of it comes down to, like you mentioned, that veteranship you have on the top side of the map. And oh, then yeah. you add in the fact you have such a powerful bot lane combo. Yeah. It's Dayul. He is a god in the bot lane right now. Best bottom laner in the LST. Ooh, that's just a, a nice little climb. You know. Simple steps here for Mega. You're also going to soon have a Rage Blade completed too for that Varus. Already has the pickaxe and recurve bow. But you can see he's maxing his Q, then his E. You can max your E if you want more poke in lane. Because uh, it is more spammable, less mana hungry, does deal a bit less damage, and it's easier to hit. Uh, yes. However, you always want to max your burst damage sp spells first over the W. A lot of on-hit Varuses go and max their W first or even second. Uh, it just doesn't deal as much damage. You want your burst spells to deal more damage because you want to apply the stacks in the mid game and then knock those stacks off with your abilities, especially with how you're corrupting um, chains apply stacks themselves over time. So then you want to use those abilities more frequently uh, to get more damage. You deal more damage that way. On top of that too, the execute damage that gets applied to your Q off the W isn't based off, off uh, skill level, it's based off your champion level. Hmm. So even scaling your W doesn't even enhance the execute you get off the execute on Q. No, it's just a mistake you see a lot in, you know, platinum, diamond level players thinking that a W is going to deal more damage because it does apply more on hit damage, but on hit Varus doesn't really come online until, you know, level 18 this is, anyway. This is extremely forced here for Detonator. You have three people up in top lane. But what do you get you're for this? Losing, you're losing mid lane. They're going to lose mid lane turret to try and force this. The mid lane turret's gone. Yeah. And look at our safe Rocky's play. Rocky's <laughs> like, well, Cold Defeat's trying to jump on me. So I'm, something's up. I'm not going to let this happen. Let's see. He's Rocky. got a bilge water cutlass, by the way, Rocky. Oh, Rocky gets aggressive, sees the Sejuani, but guess who's coming along? It's Dayul. Rocky able to flash away, and unfortunately here, Forsec has to use the Glacial Prison of Medium. Pop's going to get him back to safety. Oh Ends my. up avoiding, and Rocky somehow staying alive. And you got Dayul still alive over toward the side, able to dodge all the CC, but this is a messy fight here. And Mega is starting to run a little bit low on health bars. Dayul's going to get shut down, but G4 now rejoins into the fight. Lloyd finds a knockup. And now G4 having to kite back, find himself a quick double kill. Looking for maybe another here if he's able to find it. Shuriken gonna connect, G4, he's running low and he's gonna get shut down himself. Try Conqueror him. is gonna be able to find it. Pop finds himself another hook, flashing away off the flay. Archony though, should be able to find the slow. And Danator find themselves four kills. So many fancy plays in that fight, but ultimately one Mega should not have had any business taking. They had so much priority in the mid lane and bottom lane. They could have done so much more with the resources that Detonator were throwing top side of the map. So even through all the fancy footwork and plays, they just weren't in a good position to take that fight in the first place. Now Sek even disengaging, flashing over the wall away from the Varus ultimate, meant that he lived to fight another day. They could rejoin the fight once the crucial damage dealers of G4 and Dayul were eliminated from the fight itself. Uh, so nice play here. Watch that again. So Rocky starts this one. It's already a bad, like, you, you know it's being forced. Rocky gets back to Dayul. Dayul wants to lock down Sejuani, which an instant ultimate here is really nice. Pop will save him. Doesn't Ooh. panic with the flash. Then flashes away here. Now this is the time where he's meant to be dealing damage, but no one else is here. Lloyd is trying to fight Rich. Dayul can't get any further forward because Arjuni and Colder Feet are on him while G4's in stasis. So the fight should split up. So your main carry threat of Varus is under so much pressure. 
this entire fight. Just because the positioning of your fight is away from a safe spot, like a turret or other players on your team. Uh, Sek dodging out that ultimate means he comes back in, gets the triumph, drop, triumph pop from G4, and allows him to just live nice and easy. So, well played, come out from Detonator. They do force it, it comes out and works in their advantage. But again, when you have an immobile AD carry, like Varus, you need to be oh. in a safe spot to fight. Detonator. Picks are there, and that's going to be the ultimate used by Archony. Change Corruption comes out, and the rest of the team piling in. Kaysar's able to find Dayul. He gets taken out. Archony's able to find the kill. Meanwhile, G4 wants to re-engage over towards the side. Gets a decent chunk of damage onto Kaysar, and will find himself the kill. Flawless execution get in range of the Silas, but a nice bit of regen comes back, and the Unshackled will shut him down. Lloyd now underneath his tower, and look at this detonator. They find themselves a little bit of life here. Uh -oh. Cold feet. Uh -oh. Gets to safety, <laughs> always gets hit by the Dragon Strike, but Detonator, messy fights pay off. But it's working for them because they're picking the correct fights to take. As long as Mega are not fighting near a turret, Dayul does not have the mobility to get away from a Silas, Sejuani, and a Kled. Yet alone, the damage to kill them just yet. On hit, Varus is great in lane. It's also great when it comes to late game fights. And you saw when he was dueling Arctony one-on-one, he was very close to killing him in that fight. But they're just able to lock him down so effectively. And when you do that, you're then relying on G4 to be your main damage dealer. He's an assassin. He can get rid of some of the backline. He deleted K-Star, but he can't deal with Silas, Sejuani, Kled. He can't deal with those champions very well. That's when you need Dayul. So Mega need to start being in a position to protect Dayul. Or this gold lead they've acquired, which has already shrunk, is going to be non-existent after another fight like that. Danator having a bit of life here after the lane phase. Slowly crawling back. It's only a 4,000 gold lead here. Oh, and they're trying to see. They know where Mega's roughly at. Let's see here. That one ward keeping them. Picks up the Cataclysm. Dayul toward the side. Lantern's going to come out from Pop. Shroud is there. Infernal Drake would be pretty problematic for Detonator to give up. That would be about 17% extra damage if Mega are able to claim it. And Mega wants it. Mega already got the first one. They want to start stacking these Infernal Drakes, get the extra AD and AP. Works very well on Dayu, who's gone Rage Blade. Archony, though, able to find the catch out toward the side. Rich ends up using his ultimate, but he doesn't connect onto anyone Perfect other plan. than. Here comes a charge, though. Dell has to run away, and the engage comes out over toward the side. Feathers are going to get pulled back, and Detonator once again find a double kill. The Varus is down. G4 able to trade back onto the AD carry. And Danator, they shouldn't find anything else, but they're finding kills, they're finding advantages. And again, it's just a never-ending story of Dae Yul cannot position in these fights. Claire with the flank, the slam coming in from Silas. You can't do anything, not until you have six items at least. Until then, Mega need to start getting in position to protect their AD carry. Because yes, G4 could go and kill K-Star, you're absolutely right. But the rest of Mega's team are off tanks. Thresh, Jarvan, as well as Renekton are off-tank heroes. Whereas for the side of Detonator, they have two off-tanks of Silas as well as uh, Kled, and then a main tank of Sejuani. That's something that G4 cannot shred through. And on top of that too, if you fight in these choke points, Zaya loves that. She's putting out the piercing air feathers, and then you get the blade collar coming back. You're gonna get a nice chunk of CC, a nice chunk of damage. And I'll be frank, Rich's ultimate during that fight wasn't exactly pretty. It got the job done, but that could have been a lot worse for Mega. Now, there is one last bastion of hope here, which is now there's a big item spike for Dayu. He's got his QSS, and his flash just came back up off of cooldown. On top of that, Zeke's Harbinger was picked up by Thresh. So the extra damage will come out for Varus in these fights, and he has some extra tools to reposition as well. But Lloyd... Even he's gone full support Jarvan. Knight's Vow being picked up, throwing that on towards Dayul, saying that AD Carry is taking a lot of damage. Again, off tank Jarvan. Whereas they're against a main tank Sejuani, someone who is incredibly tanky, resistant, can dive onto the back line, can deal with the assassins like G4. See here, Danator start to head back. They were able to also secure that Infernal Drake at the end of the fight. Just have some ward coverage around that Baron too. And the gold lead continues to shrink. Only 3,500 now in favor of Mega. 
like you mentioned, you have some decent power spikes here now for Mega. You got that QSS completed. We have the Morello and the Gunblade here for G4. Essence Reaver only completed by K-Star. He's still waiting for that extra bit of gold to complete for an Infinity Edge. It looks like he's just going for that straight raw crit NAD build instead of getting some attack speed. Heavily relying on the abilities. Look at this Mega trying to set up a trap here. Not going to find it, though. They're just trying to catch out one member of Dan Nader. And we've seen Mega play like this before when they need to. Take their time, be patient, look for that one person on the opposing team to overstep their bounds. Gold lead that they acquired from their early game plays in the laning phase is now non-existent. Everyone from Detonator is now well and truly online. 4,000 gold doesn't mean all that much when you're 24 minutes into the game and you've got a good team fighting composition. The difference here is basically that QSS that was picked up as well as the broken lockets. So pretty much dead even. The Detonator have a very good late game composition. Great front to back team fighting team, uh, team fighting team. So Mega gonna be relying on G4 to continue these executions against K-Star. Oh, Seiki can't be caught out like that. Gets over toward the side. Hook comes through from Pop. Cold feet though, on the other side of the wall. Lloyd gonna go for the full engage. Rich is gonna try and make a hero play. He jumps in, finds a double knockup, and Cold feet able to go on a rampage. G4 has to use the ultimate to get the execute. Chains of Corruption are gonna connect, and the hook from the Thresh will not do the same. It's a one for one jungle for top. Yeah, but top lane for the side, Detonator's got teleport. So Cold and Feet could sit in base, look for a teleport opportunity, or simply just run straight down bot lane and say, you know what, while you're making this dance around Baron, I'm going to try and push for your first turret. And if you try and start that, I can turn it straight into a four on four with this TP. That's a good fight. I mean, you want to try and get rid of these tanks as fast as possible before Dayu gets into a fight, because that way there's one less threat for him to worry about. At the same time, losing a top lane for it. it's not exactly an ideal situation. During this entire time, though, Mega have just kind of stuck around this barricade. They haven't gone out to a lane like we've seen. Now they are only just backing. So Danator, they're able to pick themselves a little bit extra gold here and there. Shutdowns were nice to have, though. We see Colton Feet just waiting in the wings. Going to start pushing that out himself. And this should give the opportunity for Danator to go back into that Baron Pit, hopefully clear out some vision, as they see two members now in mid, and the mid member in bot lane. So there we go, Rakan's gonna push into the pit. Colonfeet's just gonna back off. Bye-bye. Uh, he might get stopped here by the Jarvan. What's his next dragon? Uh, next dragon, we'll see quite shortly. Hold on, camera. Keep panning down. Keep going out. Ooh, Ooh, it's Infernal. That's big. For both squads. Third Infernal. Uh, second for either team that gets it. Second way to blue buff here is nice. Doesn't do too much, but does give Dayu a little bit of extra mana regeneration. He can poke a little bit more. Look at that. Repositioning. That's what you like to see. They understand that Dayu is one of their big win conditions. They can't get caught out like that. G4 does have teleport waiting in the base. There is. Teleport going to come in through the back. That's going to be Infernal already secured here. Rich gets back over towards safety. Lloyd tries to go for the engage. Not going to find it. G4 steps up. Now sec, though. Big tank uses the armor plate, and they decide, okay, we trade the one jungle for the Infernal, but, but instantly Mega are going to start heading to Baron. Exactly. You trade your jungler for the Infernal, but then that's first Baron going over towards Mega. They, it's very hard for Death to try and contest this. And you can see... All the fights in the past was Mega just throwing themselves at the opposition, saying we're ahead. But Detonator punished that by making sure they can cripple the Eel's positioning. And Mega, for that single fight, repositioned just to focus around the Eel's positioning. Very nicely played. Archony stepping forward, 6,000 health onto the Baron. K-Star gets tagged by the Shuriken. He's going to go into stopwatch immediately. Meanwhile, Colonfeet in the middle of the pit. Going to go back into stopwatch. G4 repositions. 2,000 health onto the Baron. They're going to get the shutdown onto the Kled. And Danator at this point, they have to give in as the Baron secured here by Mega. Very nice fight coming out from Mega. The Dragon Pit then making sure to have their priority straight. G4 jumps in. They don't panic and follow through. He's got the stopwatch. Sorry. He's got the time to buy in order to make sure he can try to get the assassination. And as soon as Kled comes in, they stop hitting Baron. They just hit the damn Kled.
Very nicely played. They secure Baron for themselves. They get the gold lead once again. And it even allows Dayul to pick up the Phantom Dancer, a much needed item to survive. When he falls below 30% hit points, he'll get a nice big shield for himself, which should help him out since there are no assassins. They're all tanky damage deals that would jump onto him. So that shield between three to 600 hit points, I believe it is, is going to help him out so much when he gets all the lifesteal from Rage Blade as well as Blade of the Moon King. For Danator, now the question becomes, how much are you going to give up off this Baron buff? You're able to secure that second Infernal. That's great. But now you have to stop this Siege. Got three members down towards this bot lane. Rocky figures something's up. Here we go. Say going to show. Charge is going to be used. How much are you going to go? Immediately pings come in toward the mid lane. Sure you get the stun. Sure you get the knock up. You're going to trade two towers for just a Rocky. You need to finish off the kill, guys. Rocky's running. He gets the lifesteal. He gets the flash. They finally use the Sejuani ultimate. And immediately they have to recall. Because guess what? Your inhibitor on top is what going to get that? sieged. Why are they trying to chase Rocky when there's a Baron up Mega waiting to bounce in the base? That's three turrets for a kill. Completely not worth it. On top of that, there is still a minute and 40 seconds of Baron. Rocky respawns in 40. They will have a minute to work with Baron buff with Rocky having teleports available for himself. That was a poor, poor Hail Mary play coming out from Detonator, which they should have stopped the first time Renekton was able to avoid them. That question became, you know, Denator, what were you going to give up? Well, they gave up the inhibitor. And they didn't even fight over it. Again, those inhibitors, those inhibitor towers are some of your key places you can fight as a defending squad. Now you lose out on one of those. You only got usually the bot lane. Middle is easier to defend against. But you're now down to only two more chances for that fight. Everyone committed to that right as they knew exactly what Mega were trying to do. I mean, it was a very risky play and it did not pay off. So Detonator are going to have to pay the price. 7,000 gold behind is a significant advantage for Mega, especially with a Void Staff being complete by Akali. Can start to work on some of these tanky players coming out from Detonator. No longer only has to focus on diving in for K-Star. No teleport available for Colton Feet if he wants to go for a flank. Instead, push comes out from Mega. Setup being shown here by Dan Nader. Looks like they want to try and go for this. You can see Duel is a lot more confident now that he has the QSS and the fact that his team is much further ahead. Knight's Bow reducing a lot of damage dealt onto him. The Phantom Dancer helping him out. He's got a very good survivability build and very difficult for just Sec to walk up on towards him, especially with the split push going. They just have played it safe. Mega don't need to force anything here. Chain of Corruption comes out. That's going to be Glacial Prison popping onto the Thresh, but that tower is already gone. Lloyd on an engage, wants to find it. Hook's going to land on Rich mid-flight. He's not able to get back to safety. Meanwhile, Lloyd gets stuck there by the response. Chain of Corruption detonator, though. Health bars are starting to tick away and Archity able to find Lloyd. G4 gets taken down. K-Star still plenty of health and now Mega are on the run. And again, Mega didn't need to force this fight. Look at the base. There's already super minions on the turrets. There are minions on the Dead mid lane either? inhibitor turret, but Mega decided to force the fight instead. They could have played that a lot more passive. Allow Death to try and force the fight. Kite back away from the base instead. Day Yule got massive damage out of his Rage Blade. Uh, but unfortunately, didn't have the room to maneuver for the fight. Oh, Rage going for a three-man knock. I'm not going to find it, though, as Pop is able to find the kill. And Denator, you're fighting this 3v2. Sure, you got the Zayad now rejoining into the fight. Cool feed over the wall. Going to go for the bear it. trap on the rope. And Dayul going to get caught out. And K-Star flashing forward, able to find the double kill. And it looks like Denator are able to hold on a little bit longer here as K-Star should be able to finish this one off. Instead, they're going to back off. Pop gets back to safety, and Mega are unable to secure the game as Denator are able to hold on. Mega are making some very questionable late game decisions, prioritizing a Mountain Dragon. That's something you don't need. You've already broken the base. Every single inhibitor turret is down. You don't need this Mountain Dragon. If you give it over to Detonator, you still have inner turrets. You still have outer turrets Detonator have to go through. This is not a single ace game just yet. Still need another 10 minutes before that's going to happen. Mega making these very risky, questionable calls in the late game. 
And although it could bite them this match, I'm just worried. Going into playoffs, which Mega have already secured, if they get into a late game situation like this against Leah or against Win, it's going to be devastating for them. This isn't high level 600 IQ League of Legends they need to play. This is very simple. Top lane has two super minions crashing into the base. Mid lane's inhibitor turret's going to die. We should wait for them to split up to deal with that before forcing a fight. But they're continuing to press for advantage. For, for, they're trying to get pressure they don't need to create just yet. See, we're going to have the Silas going up into top lane. Has teleport available. Clone Fleet the same. So both teleports are up for Denator. Inhibitor's going to come back in 30 seconds. Mega do go ahead and claim themselves the Mound Drake. That will force the Elder Spawn to come next if the game goes long enough. As G4 and Pop are going to go up and toward the Baron Pin, try and secure a little bit of vision. Why couldn't they do that the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Just go back to base and come back for the Dragon. Well, give it over to Detonator for all I get. Much better than that. Dale's got no Flash now as well. Difficult for him to deal with this fight. Does have the Infinity Edge item breakpoint. You could already see how fast he was auto-attacking the last fight. So it's very difficult for him to deal with Sejuani, who has a lot of armor. On top of that, too, if he's able to just get the assist during the start of the fight onto one of those tanks, you're just going to get that passive ramped up immediately with that Rage Blade. Instantly hit that attack speed cap. It really does come down to these fights, which AD carry is going to survive. See here, G4 going to head back into the Shroud off the Shuriken. Wards are going to get cleared up. Lots of pings coming out here, possibly looking for the engage. They find it on to Pop, and there's the engage. Dayul's caught in the middle of the fight. He gets knocked up. Redemption's going to be there. K-Star unable to get the fight. There it is. Finally, the virus is going to get taken down, and G4 needs to make a hero play, but he will be denied as Rocky has to run, flashing out. And Detonator, it feels like they have this game now starting to be in their hands. Detonator's composition simple. We have two tanks, Kled as well as Sidrani. We have our off tank of Silas. And all we have to do is throw those three people onto Dayul. If he's got no flash, he is strictly dead. There is nothing you can do when these three players are on top of Dayul. And you can see how hard Mega tried to deal with that, but they can't. Rocky Lloyd, this is a risky fight to take here. If you lose this, you could lose a lot more. He's able to defend Lloyd and Rocky. Two-man army, what can they do? Rocky's going to get knocked up, and as well, Rich is trying to soak up so much damage. They pop a GA, and Mega, they are just scrambling. They are desperate to defend what they can. Cold Feet going to get knocked up, and they're able to defend. Now Day a teleport going to come out onto the side of Dayul. Has a little bit of home guards back. Bad. Ain't going to be enough. Immediately back to the Baron. Good defense being put up there by Lloyd as well as Rocky. Under setting, it was a medium risk play. Burn the GA, try and force the Baron. Only thing is, you teleport. have a teleport available for this Silas. You also going to have this Kled with charge here. Oh, he the ultimate. Can they use it? It's going to get secured here by Dayul. Chain of Corruption is going to be used in response. Now Cold Feet onto a flank himself. Rich going to pop the ultimate, finds a knockup onto Rocky. That's going to be put down into a purse at this point. And now Charge going to lead the rest of the fight on through onto Lloyd gets the flag drag in time. Archney now goes in for the re-engage. Dayul, though, kiting for his life, able to find that shot with the help of G4. Sake goes down extremely low. Shuriken is going to land, but he doesn't pull the trigger. Pop gets the hook, but that will be the disengage. Good fight coming out for Mega. They needed to turn around at that turret. They got there just in time to do so. Had they have lost more members, Detonator could have tried to march down mid lane against the Baron buff. With Silas dead, Mega going to try and make a play here to push towards the mid lane, at least shove out these waves. Yeah, they all a little bit more farm. Try and get him that Mercurial Scimitar finish. We'll give him the lifesteal he needs, the double lifesteal items to survive these fights. Again, Mega need to position around their AD carry. That is their win condition now. Position around the AD carry, protect him, and allow G4 to be the assassin. If they all falls, the fight's over. They don't have the follow-up damage to kill Kled to kill Sidwani, to kill Silas. Whereas for Detonator, they have the front-to-back team composition. They just need to dive into the back lines, get on top of the AD carry, it's all over. And the whole time K-Star can work on, work on the front line being the traditional AD carry he is, and he has that outplay button against G4. If he can time his ultimate right, he'll be able to avoid some of the burst damage that G4 can output, giving his team some time to defend. There was an option here for Dale as well, 
He could have gone for more ability power and Zvaris got the Zonyas. That will keep him alive. Uh, but opted for the physical damage build instead. Has more punch to it. Let's see Mega. Blind Fishing. hook coming out from Pop, just trying to find one member. Let's see, Lloyd's ultimate gonna be stolen away here by the silence. They need to play this safe. They need to position around their AD carry and work on these inhibitors. A single fight here for either team with a majority wipe is game over. See here, you got the split push starting to be formed for Rocky. Gonna go down into that bot lane, push that Ooh. out. Elder. Oh, this is scary. Elder Dragon. Elder just, just spawning here in 30 seconds. Oh, this is a blind look here. Got the scrying out in time. They need a position around there. This is very difficult to go for. Oh, Chain of Corruptions it. are missed. Ultimate advantage is in favor of Danator. Charge gonna come over toward the side. They wanna try and jump in. Archony has the Cataclysm available. G4 is trying to go over back toward the backside. G4 leads them onto a wild goose chase. K-Star using the blade collar though. Able to survive a little bit Dayul's longer. Untouched. Dayul though, able to survive through the rest of the fight. It's able all to over. find it and Mega find themselves the ace for one triple kill for Dayul. And just compare the replays of the first few fights that we saw coming out from Mega in that final team fight. And you can see during the course of this game, they learn exactly how to position around it. Kiting backwards all the way from the blue buff pit down towards their Raptor pit in order to take that fight for Dayu in a better spot. Blocking Cold of Feet from charging into the fight. Stopping Set from getting anywhere near. And on top of that, Pop throwing down the ultimate to create space. Beautiful from Mega. And then here they gave them a run for their money, but game one goes in favor of Mega. At 41 minutes, a long one for LSD. Yeah, Woo! very long game coming out from these two squads. Back and forth. Mega should have had it in the early game. Should. As should much have. as, you know, Detonate did a very good job finding back. They, um, like, don't get me wrong. The early game laning phase was great from Mega. And that's how they got their leads. But Detonator understood their win condition much better than Mega did for majority of that game. And that's why they held on so well. They just knew how to win the game. Kill Dayul. They killed Dayul, there's no damage to deal with their front line. Um, whereas Mega took them some time to understand that Dayul wins them the game. <laughs> took them a long time, actually, to understand Ooh. how Dayul wins them that game. Oh, but that was pretty close. Like, yes. Especially for Danator. Like, there is a solid opportunity here for Danator. Towards the end, it was very close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that early yeah. game. Yeah, yeah and uh, it looks like Mega could have ended it. It was and a solo kill in top lane, bottom lane, and mid lane was at a 30 CS discrepancy. Ooh, that early game was not looking good for Detonator. Yeah. If you can, you know, shape that up maybe a little more and then play into those team fights, because there are some of those team fights that were really nice for Detonator. Well, the last team fight coming out was really good for Mega, and we can actually see how yeah. they improve so heavily. So you start very here. Split up. Dale starts here. He's going to whiff the ultimate, and that says Detonator, let's go. But watch how far back he goes. <laughs> He's like, First no. thing, they block the ultimate coming out from Skull. Then Dayul gets the position. Pop throws down his ultimate early to create even more space for Dayul. And then once all that's done, Dayul goes, now I can auto attack. This whole time, G4 doing what he does best, being the assassin, disrupting the backlights. And then Dayul just walks in once most of the abilities are used and champions are within three or four auto attacks of being killed. That puts him at less risk, gives him more space to work with allowing him to get the damage down that he needs to kill these tanks. You can see the up and down <laughs> gameplay. Detonator really trying to fight back and they understood how to punish Mega in that game. And eventually it was Mega that came out on top. Okay, you can see that 40,000 damage coming out from that Boris. Able to help carry those fights. He's gonna get MVP, but it should go to G4. Yeah, so G4 had some very clutch return kills that near the end of those fights that Honestly, there could have been clean aces for Danator, but G4 came and got double kills to try and equal it out. And the reason why I give it a G4 as well, my personal MVP, which is, you know, the best MVP, to be honest, uh, is because he's the only one that did his job, really, for the majority of that game. He won his mid lane. Every team fight he knew, his job was, I assassinate K's time. And Dale's going to get it. Yeah, we're going to talk about <laughs> that. Uh, his job was, I'm going to assassinate K's time. I'm going to disrupt the backlines. I'm going to create space for Dale. And he did that every single damn fight. Whereas his tanks were just running around Whee! with clubs, thinking that they're assassins too. That's not their <laughs> job. Their job was to protect Dayul. And the whole time Dayul was playing as if he had that protection. It was wrong. 
What he should be doing is being six flashes away from the nearest <laughs> enemy, waiting for them to kill these dummy tanks, and then he comes in for the cleanup afterwards. So I, I think G4 had a really good game there. I think he deserves the MVP, but they all, of course, yeah. when you get 36% of your team's damage share, and yeah. you, you are the win condition for your team, and you do win, and you get MVP. That's biased production team, sorry. Wow. Gonna play one on our production team? Yeah, they're big Ouch. fans of Dayu. <laughs> okay. I'm watching you guys now. They're big, they're big Dayu fans. I'm telling <laughs> you right now. Big Dayu fans. Oh, boy. But, all right. I'll be frank, though. That game won. It looked how we expected with Mega kind of dominating the lanes, but we've seen some cracks in the armor here for Mega yeah. when it comes to. And then we'll see whether or not Danator can start to expose those heading into game two. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll jump right into game two.